thankfully got up and walked off. Brian Greasy. He's not throwing, he's running. Tiptoeing down the sideline. 40-yard quarterback keeper. It sets up this. Two plays later. Charles Woodson said, I'm the best player in the country. Curtis Enos agreed with him. After this game, tough to argue. Michigan up 17 zip. In the third quarter, it's 24 zip. Chris Howard. 29 yards. Michigan rolling over the Nittany Lions at home. 31 to nothing. They went up 34 zip. Penn State, the first team this season to score against Michigan in the fourth quarter, but all for naught. The researcher says this is the worst home loss for Joe Paterno ever as Michigan now takes care of Penn State 34-8, and there is a chance, pending the outcome of our game, that Michigan ends up being number one. Previous teams for Michigan to start 9-0. They have lost a few times. Don't forget that loss to Minnesota in their 10th game. Also to Ohio State in game 11. That game against Ohio State still looms on the schedule for Lloyd Carr's club. Speaking of unbeatens, no longer for Toledo. They get romped by Ball State 35 to 3. Ball control, a big, big problem for Toledo. They coughed the ball up four times and lost four turnovers. Very, very interesting day. There was a time that it appeared as if we would be looking through rose-colored glasses. Washington ultimately loses to Oregon. Nebraska comes back and wins. How does it all play out? Let's go to Chapel Hill. Join Chris Fowler, Kirk Kerbstreet, and the coach, Lee Corsa. Well, Carl, thank you very much. Judgment Day proving to be a truly magical day in college football. We got the Tomahawk chop over to our left. The Macarena from the speakers here. This is an electric atmosphere. But back to that Nebraska-Missouri game. You talked about the immaculate reception. I think Nebraska's miracle play with no time left has to rank even beyond that. And that final drive for the Cornhuskers, 69 yards, a minute two, with no timeouts left for Scott Frost. I think what happened is Scott Frost became a legend in Nebraska football, just like Franco Harris became became a legend with the Pittsburgh Steelers. That was a magnificent drive. Now Nebraska still has a chance to win a national championship, but they would have never done it without Scott Frost. Yeah, you go back to the beginning of the year, how interesting oh. it is. Great for Scott Frost to have this big game and have that big victory late. How about on the other side? You cannot say enough about Corby Jones. Accounted for over 300 yards of total offense, threw for three touchdown passes, and ran one in. He showed a lot of character. And I'll tell you what, I think he is the most underrated quarterback in college football this year. He can hurt people throwing and running. He looked good today. Bound to have some impact in the polls, though. Nebraska's narrow, miraculous victory over a four-touchdown underdog. Meanwhile, Michigan's emphatic victory over Penn State. Wolverine fans now have to root for North Carolina, already ahead of the Tar Heels in the polls. Florida State's lead over Michigan, coming into today with 76 points in the coaches' poll. A little bit narrower in the AP poll. Well, I want to admit, first of all, I'm stupid. I'm dumb. I picked Penn State to win this game, and I said before that Michigan was the best football team I've seen in person, and I keep picking against them. I gotta be dumb. Florida, that is, that is nobody's <laughs> hey, as good as Michigan. You, you told me a long time ago to stick with your instincts, and hopefully you learn that today. I'll tell you what, Michigan over the last couple years, losing four games in a year, losing to teams like Purdue, Northwestern, a week that I think North Carolina has yet to play their best football game. You gotta keep in mind, this is new for them. They've gone through every single football game expecting to win. They've gone out and just taken care of business. They have yet to play a game with emotion. I think tonight, as you can tell from this atmosphere, Carolina will come out very early and play with a great deal of emotion. After that, they get a flat-out play. Well, there's one thing about this. In the Atlantis Coast Conference games this year, Florida State has averaged 14 penalties and over 100 yards in lost yardage. Now, last week, they had 14 for 148 yards against North Carolina State. But here's the interesting point. Against the Pac-10 in the Big East, they only averaged five penalties and 55 yards. Yo, friend, <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? I say nothing. Well, Bobby Bowden has certainly said something to the league office about that. Electric atmosphere here. The crowd was here two hours. Never been a game like this down here in Chapel Hill. Let's go up to the booth now to Ron Franklin and Mike Godfrey for their thoughts. Guys? You know, Chris, it was interesting to watching Florida State when they arrived here yesterday. Very cold and damp. The players were bundled up. But to me, the most important thing was is they filed in. I heard Daryl Bush doing an interview, and he talked in terms of if we win. I heard Bobby Bowden say the same thing in an interview. If we win. I guess what I'm saying, Mike, I didn't see that supremely confident attitude that Florida State normally carries with them. Ron, when you watch a team on tape, and I'm sure Florida State's watched a lot of tape on North Carolina, they can gain a lot of respect because North Carolina has 
has a lot of good athletes, and they match up very well against this Florida State team. Mike, take us through some tips that you see in this football game tonight that will win for either side. I think the big thing for North Carolina is not let Travis Minor get started in any kind of running game because they need to turn it into a one-dimensional game and get after uh, Thad Busby because, to me, Thad Busby is the key player in this whole ball game tonight. I think one of the differences also is I stood on the practice field with Mike and uh, and Coach Brown on Wednesday afternoon, and it was raining like the Dickens, and he said, for once, we normally want Florida State, we want them to play in the rain to neutralize the speed. This year, all our coaches are upset because we want to play them on a fast track. I think that speaks volumes. Carl Ravitch, let's go back to you. Hi, Ron. Thank you very much. Chris and company as well. Back to you guys before we get to the kick at 730. The Residence in College Football Scoreboard Show continues. Bino this college football scoreboard is brought to you by Quaker State. The quality your car deserves. That block of granite is the Lombardi Award. It'll be awarded by the Houston Rotary Club in December to one of the top linemen or linebackers. And here are the four finalists announced for the first time. Katzamore from Ohio State, Grant Wistrom in on that final tackle for the Huskers in overtime. And two guys you will see tonight, number 85 for Florida State tonight, Andre Wadsworth. And keep an eye on number 87 for the Tar Heels, Greg Ellis. Back with Lee and Kirk, our final thoughts on the game. Will it be the Seminoles reestablishing their dominance over the Atlantic Coast Conference or North Carolina, their first win ever over the top five, announcing they are here as one of the elite? Well, I think the key in this football game is going to be field position. I think both teams have such dominating defenses that if you're a team trying to move the ball, you're trying to go 80 yards, it's very difficult. Look for turnovers, block punts, interceptions, fumbles. The team that can play the short field wins the game. I think a Carolina playing in front of this home crowd gets it done tonight and proves they are a big time program. Well, guess who you think I'm picking? I'll tell you what, I thought Bobby Bond, I'm in the dressing room saying one thing, Nebraska stumbled, you're number two, you got a chance to win the national championship. Go no! That's what I say. <laughs> That's good. That's the best we can always count you for a pep talk. The Tar Heels would like to tar and feather your beautiful little feathered headdress right there. It's the biggest game in Atlantic Coast Conference history. The atmosphere is magical. A light rain is beginning to fall as the Tar Heels and the Seminoles prepare to take the field. We're here all night at halftime. We'll talk about the poll implications of this ball game, the game in State College, and the amazing game of Columbia, Missouri. Lee, you've got to take that off very shortly. Yeah, please. Let's go up to the booth now, the guys who will call tonight's final chapter of Judgment Day, Ron Franklin and Mike Godfrey. Guys. Nestled among the peaceful pines lies North Carolina's Keenan Stadium. Tonight, Chapel Hill comes alive like never before. Never before has the ACC, let alone this town, seen a football game quite of this magnitude. Well, this town has gone nuts. It's gone nuts. We love all the hype. You get six tickets. I want it. I want it bad. God doesn't have six tickets to this game. It's a great time. It's just fun to be around here, but no. Second rank Florida State arrives with a typical air of confidence. Bobby Bowden's teams have always been road warriors, battle tested in so many huge games. At home or in hostile territory, they are always ready. And the home run arsenal is as loaded as ever. Fifth rank North Carolina, they've marked this game of their calendar over a year ago. They've waited for a moment like this for what seems like an eternity. The Heels now have a dominant defense, capable of diffusing every threat. And for the first time, they could look the mighty Seminole straight in the eye and not blink. All-American quarterback Dre Bly fears no one and would love Florida State to try their luck on his side of the field. Feel the electricity. Keenan Stadium, the town of Chapel Hill, the entire state of North Carolina is ready for this moment. The Seminoles have come to town to face the Tar Heels and the conference, the top five in the national championship hopes all are at stake. I've been vending Coors Light for a long time.
at capacity? Well, I guess number two, the Seminoles are in town to take on the number five ranked Tar Heels of North Carolina. Keenan Stadium jam packed. Maybe a sacrilege in this area. There was an exhibition basketball game this afternoon. Many of these students didn't go so they could stand in line and be one of the first to arrive for what is looking like the night for Mac and not for Dean here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Hi, everybody. Ron Franklin along with Mike Godfrey and welcome once again to Saturday night primetime college football. And this Saturday, they're calling it Judgment Day. Well, folks, there's no time to repent and become a good guy now. If you haven't done your homework and gotten prepared, then it's way too late. Mike, the work phrase this week has been Florida State has been there. North Carolina has not. How do you retort that? Different time, different team. And, Ron, make no mistake about this. This North Carolina team is good enough athletically to win this football game. All right, then. If North Carolina is going to burst the bubble and they're going to defeat Florida State, how do they do it? Several different keys. But one is they've got to pressure Thad Busby, the Florida State quarterback. they got to knock him down. they got to get him to throw quick, throw high, throw low, and to throw interceptions. And if they can do that, then on the other side, the running game. Jonathan Linton, they got a big back that they can run right at Florida State's defensive line keep Andre Wadsworth uh, very very uh, slow down Mike if I had to say there's an X factor in this football game Travis Miner the running back for Florida State if he should get away tonight and have a good evening of running the football to me that changes the entire complexion of this football game without a doubt I agree with you six touchdowns in two games for Travis Miner and if he gets off like he did against Virginia in the first play then that forces the defensive coordinator not to worry so much about the passing game then you have to worry about both dimensions the run and the pass Bobby Bowden, it is his birthday today, and his 68th birthday, certainly the best present that he could have would be to get this victory, which would be number 206 tonight. Across the field, Mac Brown. His first two years, he won a total of two ball games. In the last two years, he's only lost two ball games, and now the opportunity is here for his football team to stand tall and say, we have arrived not only in the conference, but to the nation temperature tonight it's going to be very cool 49 it will drop down into the low 40s humidity at 80 percent the wind not much of a factor right now five to ten miles an hour and there is a light drizzle beginning to fall here at the stadium North Carolina won the toss. They have deferred so they can have the ball in the second half. Florida State receives and will defend the East goal as you look at the two deep men for the Florida State Seminoles. This one is underway. Coles. Coles will not make the 15-yard line. And let's check it on the sideline with Adrian Karsten. Adrian. Ron, thanks very much. Now, I have learned that over the past two or three days, key members of the Florida State Seminole football team have been suffering from the flu, including quarterback Thad Busby, linebacker Darrell Bush, and even Andre Wadsworth. And furthermore, they spent over an hour on the team plane yesterday with the rest of the travel squad while breathing the same potentially contagious air. Now, remnants or onset of the flu may not show up early in this game, but as it wears on, if they're feeling fatigue, it may affect the way they play run we'll keep an eye first down from the 15 minor hit at the line of scrimmage Vonnie Holiday number 90 one of the first men along with Pringley there to make the stop for Carolina and this is the way Florida State scrimmages buzz we get quarterback minor the young man who just carried very important tonight outstanding group of wide receivers they go seven deep and also Melvin Pearsall the tight end uh, outstanding out of Lake Wales Florida this is not a great Florida State offensive line in fact they have two redshirt freshmen who start Brannon at left half and 78 Donald Haven, 6'5", 305, a redshirt freshman out of Miami. Shotgun formation, first pass of the night. Will it be? Yes, throws it into the turf. Incomplete because of the pressure by Keith Newman. And quickly, this is what the defense looks like. Greg Ellis at left defensive end, named one of the four finalists for the Lombardi Award tonight. Holiday and Davis have got to get pressure up the middle. Linebacking core, Newman, Mays, and Simmons, maybe the best in the country as a tandem. And Williams and Bly, the two corners, they will bump and run with Florida State all night long. That's a key. 
Third down. Line to make is out at the 25. They go with the running play. Davis is there to stuff it up. And this crowd has gone absolutely berserk on three and out by the defense. Ron, a good series by North Carolina's defense. Now they'll go after the punt. With North Carolina on defense, they'll go after every one of Florida State's punts tonight. They'll try to block them. Cottrell is a freshman. Carolina has said they want to make him act like a freshman. And they get pressure, but he gets it away. And it hits a Florida State player on the fly and took a big North Carolina bounce inside the 35-yard line. I'm not sure I've ever seen that. We're going to see that, Ron, put pressure, North Carolina pressure in the Florida State kick. The gunner, the outside man going down the field, hit on the back. And North Carolina has great field position to open this football game. Hit him right in the head. Hit him in the back of the head, so it's only 23 yards on the punt. And you could see Florida State getting on the football just as quickly as they could. Jermaine Stringer. Yep, number 86. Sophomore out of Atlanta. As you look at Davenport, who opens at quarterback. And he takes over with outstanding field position. There are his numbers. Seven touchdowns, two picks. Both of them came in their last game against Georgia Tech. Got a throw in first down. Quick pass almost intercepted over the middle by Lamont Green. So here's the way they start the Tar Heels of North Carolina. Davenport, Dyer primarily a blocker. He's an outstanding one. Jonathan Linton, he is the guy you got to watch tonight. Can they run the football? He will be the difference. L.C. Stevens and Nate Brown, outstanding wide receivers. L.C. did not have a good game last year against Florida State. Crumber, outstanding tight end. Not a great offensive line for North Carolina either. But right in the middle, Jeff Saturday, even if he didn't play for Carolina, he would have a blue collar. He is a throwback. Coaches love Saturday. Running play, this is Linton. Three yards, now four. He will take it to the 31. And it's going to be a third down at about six as Shevin Smith comes up to make the tackle. Spires, Johnson, Julian Pittman starts tonight. And Andre Wadsworth, also one of the Lombardi finalists. Howard Bush and Green, outstanding linebackers for Florida State. And in the secondary, they've been picked on a little bit this year. Roll and Cody, well, they have uh, some work ahead of them tonight. Shevin Smith, just like another linebacker, will call number 30's name a lot this evening. Third down, want to throw. Sets in the pocket, hit, ball is loose. No signal of an incomplete pass, and Florida State has the football. It was lateral back and picked up again by the Seminoles, and this is Dexter Jackson heading toward the end zone. There was a flag down back at the 47-yard line. Looks like Greg Spires in there with a good rush. So the lateral was illegal, but it will be Florida State football from what the signal has been given. Greg Spires made the tackle for Florida State. <laughs> On the recovering team, five yards from the side of the foul, first down. I believe it's going to be Greg Spires. Oscar Davenport getting set up. Oh, his arm was very close to going forward, Mike. Good hit. Here's the lateral by Andre Wadsworth to Dexter Jackson coming back. But a signal for Florida State's defense putting pressure on Oscar Davenport. That's not what North Carolina wanted in the first series. They wanted to get Oscar off and comfortable. So, crowd has calmed down just a little bit, and the Seminoles will go on offense. From the 42-yard line, Busby again for the shotgun. 
Sets deep in the pocket. Going to go out in the flat. Throws it complete. Simmons is right there defensively. And he will just eat up Travis Miner. And here's one of the areas, Mike, that you talked about. The speed of the linebackers in Miner having trouble outrunning Simpson. Simmons. They, they have excellent speed at the linebackers. And when you look at the, what it looks like, they're taking a linebacker and putting him on Travis Miner on every pass play to make sure that he doesn't get a war gun play out there outside and runs it for 80 yards so it's going to be second down that's a loss of about a half yard in the play one turnover in the ball game seven holes benefit from it but that pass right there to warwick thrown behind him and busby rushed a little bit in the pocket well this is different than, than any time florida state's ever seen another defense because all of a sudden they're bumping the wide receivers now they're trying to knock them off their path so that that busby has to wait a little bit longer to throw that ball so the key is for that offensive line inside, particularly the tackles, they gotta they gotta protect Ron because the receiver's gonna take longer to get open. Third down, line to make is the 47 and a half of North Carolina. Busby calls him set. Here comes the pressure. Blitz up the middle pass is caught at the 41-yard line of North Carolina. That's good to E.G. Green, and he was tackled immediately by Omar Brown. Robert Williams falls down on this play, number 29. He's in pretty good shape right here. And as he starts back, gets on the hip, slips a little bit there, and, and the safety didn't come up fast enough on E.G. Green. Good completion by Thad Busby. So the ball first and 10 at the Carolina 41-yard line. The play good for 17. Busby looks at a blitz, gets the pass away, and one of the thrown in again. Busby gets punished on the play. Simmons came through and hit him and knocked him to the ground. So the chess match continues and the body punches continue as far as the linebackers and the interior linemen beating on quarterbacks well, already. You're seeing a lot of hands, the defensive uh, corners putting hands on the Florida State receivers, trying to jam them at the line of scrimmage. No score if you just joined us. A fumble by North Carolina. They had it in Florida State territory, so the Seminoles have it back. Second possession by them. Quick pass. That one is off the mark. Pearsall, the intended receiver. Williams, the man covering on the play. Now what Florida State's trying to do, Ron, is go to the no huddle. Speed it up maybe a little bit more to keep North Carolina from getting the extra DB into the into the game. Having Maybe give them a little bit of problems getting their signals in also. Well, you see the numbers last year. Third down conversions, only one of 12 in this ballgame. Tonight, they're one of two. Busby sets, good protection. Drills it over the middle. It is intercepted by North Carolina. That's Omar Brown. Let's take a break. Stadium clock shows 11.05. Left to play opening quarter. No score. Jim Harbaugh and Jay Lewenberg for 1-800-COLLECT. ESPN's presentation of college football, Florida State versus North Carolina, is brought to you by the United States Army Reserve. Be all you can be. For more information, call 1-800-USA-ARMY. And by Chrysler, engineered to be great cars. No score. Second offensive possession by Carolina. Bobby Bowden said yesterday there ain't going to be any long drives in this football game, and that's an exact quote. He said both defenses are too much alike. They're both very, very good. Davenport possibly with an audible, a very long count as he goes under center. Ball just across the 20. And it's an option play. Lincoln turns it up, puts the head down, and is going to have about five yards. Mike? 
the interception, when you have bump and run coverage at the line of scrimmage, there's a couple different ways you can play it in the secondary. Now, this is a two-deep look with Omar Brown sitting back, waiting on the two receivers to come down the field, being jammed by the corners. Omar Brown with a big interception. Mike, let me ask you about that last play. We see an option early here. I don't think we'll see that often, but that's a message sender, isn't that's it? That's trying to control Andre Wadsworth and defensive ends, trying to show them enough to slow them down in the pass rush. Second down and five, pumped it to the sides, middle screen, great defensive play. As soon as Barnes made the catch, Tay Cody was right there to just interrupt the entire thing. And he'll knock him down for a two-yard loss. He's going back to the option play, the play before, Ron. Uh, if you look at the North Carolina State, uh, Florida State film, North Carolina State had success against Florida State with the option, so North Carolina stole it off of him. Mac Brown looks on at his ball club trying to convert a third down situation. They have a third down and they need to take the ball to their own 31 yard line. Oscar Davenport, a junior from St. Petersburg, Florida, 6'4, 195. Sets deep in the pocket. Lost, puts air into this one, and it's going to be intercepted by Shevin Smith. So interception and then another interception picked off this time by Florida State back at the 42 yard line and Davenport a little ill advised on that. Yeah the last thing you want to do is be third long against Florida State because if you got to throw the ball you're in trouble. Oscar Davenport is better when he's short yardage situation and first down throwing the football. Here an ill advised throw here he's going to try to get the ball to LC Stevens deep but Shevin Smith, the walk-on free safety, who now earned a scholarship, picks it off, and Florida State has decent field position on their 43. You know, it comes down to that thing of a punt is really not that bad a play. No, it's, it it's really not, <laughs> but uh, they didn't have any chance to complete that pass. So again, Florida State takes the ball beyond their own 40-yard line, but the running play, not going to be much as Ellis steps up and makes the hit on Travis Minor. Maybe a gain of one. You know, Shevin didn't score in that last game we had a couple of weeks ago against Virginia, but in two games prior to that, one was a, a blocked punt, and the other on an interception he had scored in two games in a row on ESPN. Well, both safeties were sitting back in coverage, in too deep coverage. Omar Brown for North Carolina. And as you look at the graphic, I think this is really big tonight. I think they have to intercept that Busby at least three, four times to have any chance to win this football game. Coach Bowden has changed again. They've gone to a huddle and an eye formation, Mike. Right? They get more protection out of the eye. Boy, Busby gets punished as the pass is incomplete. And I mean Pringley really took him down hard. Ron, the whole key, another key defensively is to hit the quarterback tonight. Florida State does such a great job of knocking the other quarterback down. Well, you see North Carolina doing the same thing. Ellis and Pringley punishing Thad Busby on every pass play. Here's receiver Peter Warwick trying to get open. Good, tight coverage by North Carolina. The numbers on Busby so far, two of eight, one interception, and 16 yards. And you would have to say the bump and run coverage is giving him a little bit of a problem. Third down, line to make the Carolina, 47 and a half. Gets his pass away, one-on-one -on -one coverage. Defender fell down, and it's incomplete as the ball is overthrown. Florida State bench wants pass interference called, but there will be none. Lavernus Coles, the intended receiver for the Seminoles. And what you do is you go to the third receiver, Lavernus Coles, against the safety. Reggie Love, he's a backup corner, so they like that matchup because they can't have success right now with Drake Lye. And Reeves. So look for that, Ron. Now the third receiver against the third defensive back. Offensive holding. The penalty is declined, so they'll have to punt as Dre Bly goes back deep. And again, let's watch and see if North Carolina comes after the punter, Cottrell. His first kick, good for 23 yards. to the outside, gets all he can get, and steps out of bounds at the 33-yard line. So it is 35 on the kick and 11 on the return, and there's a timeout on the field with 8.34 remaining first quarter. No score, Florida State, North Carolina. PN2. Matt Busby standing on the sideline. We were just commenting on the fact that he looks so very calm. 
And he does, but his heart is pumping inside that jersey. Now look at the, the drives right here. Three plays, minus nine, and a fumble. Carolina, their own 21, three, and the interception. So already three turnovers. A slow starting football team as you look. Florida State, 104 points in the first quarter. North Carolina, slow starting all year. This is Lemp. Left side, lost his footing. Went down. Nobody really touched him. Corey Simon was the closest guy to him, but he just slipped and fell down. It's going to be a couple of yard loss. Ron, I've just noticed on that play, they're having a tough time with Julian Pittman. Uh, he is just uh, making a difference inside at the tackle spot for Florida State. Second down at 11. Still no score. Clock about to go under eight minutes to play opening quarter. Running play again. Linton breaks one tackle, takes it across the 35, and he's out to the 36. Daryl Bush tripped him up, and again, it's going to be third down and long for North Carolina. And an interesting number is it, it's, what, 50-50 as far as zone and man coverage as far as the Seminoles in third and long situations. It really is, and I think that the matchup that's best for North Carolina on third down is Algie Crump with a tight end because what they'll try to do is get him on a linebacker. So let's look and see if number 82 is, in fact, involved in this play. He is at the top of your screen. Sets, drills the pass, thrown behind, almost intercepted by Roll. Ball was thrown behind the intended receiver, Octavius Barnes, and Samari Roll almost came up with the third turnover. And this is not how Mac Brown and Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator, wanted to start off with Oscar Davenport. They wanted to give him some quick passes where he could get some confidence. And you can see he's clearly throwing behind his receivers. And you're right, it should have been intercepted by Samari Roll. Dee Feaster is back deep. That's the key right here for North Carolina. They do not want to kick to Dee Feaster. They need good coverage. Eight-man rush at the line of scrimmage. Let's see if they come after it. Yep, they got the pressure on, but plenty of time to kick off the side of his foot. Very poor kick, and it's going to take a Florida State bounce and is rolling back to the 45-yard line. So Brian Schmitz with not a good punt. That one is going to be a total of only 19 yards. For college football next Saturday night on ESPN, a special time, 5.50 Eastern. Damian Craig and the 17th-ranked Auburn Tigers taking on Robert Edwards and the number nine Georgia Bulldogs. It's between the hedges next Saturday night on ESPN primetime. Ron, you can't keep giving Florida State good field position like this. And North Carolina has lost the field position battle here in the first quarter. You see the quick adjustment defensively by Carolina as they jump into the gap. Busby gets his pass away, man-on-man -man coverage, and he breaks the tackle. 45 down to the 40, and to the 37-yard line as Williams and Brown combine on the tackle. But Peter Warwick showing you just how quick he is. Ron, good move by Mark Rick, the offensive coordinator, because when you're facing bump-and-run coverage, all of a sudden, if you get some movement in your wide receiver in motion, you get him away from that corner a little bit. So see, now you, you see the motion now the cushion a little bit as he goes upfield and Peter Warwick that got him off the line of scrimmage cleanly so Mike they scrimmage at the 38 yard line shotgun formation again Carolina shows blitz they come in the middle quick pass is thrown complete at the 32 Reggie Love is there defensively to make the tackle on the Vernus Coles there's Mark Rick second from the right they're working on that third wide receiver in other words, if you can't beat Robert Williams and Dre Bly, go after the third guy. That's Reggie Love. He's a backup safety. He's a backup corner. And they're working Lavernius Coles against him. Three wide receivers. It's Damian Harrell, number eight, to the top of your screen. That's the route right there. That's the combination right here. 
They go with the running play. Travis Miner back into the boundary. Tries to break a tackle, and he's going to have the first down. Kay Mays makes the tackle, and let's go downstairs and check with Adrian Karsten. Adrian? Ron, so far in the ball game, Bobby Bowden has been very displeased with the pace of his offense. Not so much the speed at which they're running, but they're running the play clock down within five, six seconds sometimes. And so far in three or four possessions, they already have ten plays with no gain or sometimes less. He feels because they're all guessing by the time they get up to the line of scrimmage. Guys that crank up the pace, get up to the line sooner. Let's get that ball snapped with ten seconds or more left on the play clock. First and ten. Line of scrimmage is the 28 of North Carolina. No score. Clock about to run under five minutes left. And you see the play clock down to two, just as Adrian was talking about. Right up in the middle, got him open. First down at the 11-yard line as Damian Harrell, that third receiver, got loose. Yeah, they really are working on Reggie Love right now. That's their key right now. They're going against Reggie Love to back up. He tried to hold on to Damian Harrell, but Damian Harrell came free, and that's the matchup that they, they found right now in this ballgame. Well, they picked him with the Pearsall, the tight end, and that's what got him uh, off stride and behind in the play. First that's, the, down. that's the respect they have for Dre Bly and Robert Williams, three wide receivers, and now they got Coles back in against him. You see... Stepping up in the middle. They go with a handoff. Minor right side inside the 10. He's going to have about four as Greg Williams comes up to make the hit on Travis Minor. Travis is only 190 pounds, but as you can see, waits for his blockers and has learned very quickly not to give away his body until he has to. Well, coaches, when you talk to Mark Rick, he said he doesn't make mistakes talking about Travis Minor, USA Today's Player of the Year in high school. A success for Florida State inside the 20. Second down. Ball is resting at the Carolina 9. That's Warwick in motion. Short drop to throw. Puts the ball up and he misses that one completely. E.J. Green. E.J. thought they were running a completely different route. Closest guy to it was uh, Dre Bly. Well, Dre Bly had great coverage on E.J. Green. Again, trying to motion him. Trying to move him around to get him free. Good coverage by Dre Bly. Ball thrown poorly on Great by saw that the ball was going to be thrown inside. Neither quarterback has been overly sharp early. No, they haven't. But you got to give the edge to Florida State because they've won the field position battle at this point. It's third down. To pick up the first, they have to take it to the Carolina two. There's a look at Warren. Fake the running play right up in the middle. Touchdown. He's got the tight end, Melvin Pearsall. Isn't it interesting on this drive that Melvin Pierce saw the tight end wide open, Omar Brown too far back on him, but they used Melvin Pierce saw on the backup wide receivers, Avernius Coles and Harrell, so you got to credit Mark Rick and Bobby Baum for good strategy finding the open man. Sebastian Janikowski, the freshman out of Daytona, kicks the extra point. That, by the way, for Pearsall is his first touchdown in 1997. Let's take a break. Four minutes even remaining. Opening quarter. The Seminoles have jumped on top. That is colorize that picture, and it's not as depressing. Voila. Depressing? Not depressing. You can almost imagine the look on their faces. They're a little happier. Pop's got a red plaid shirt and a blue jumper. 7-0, Florida State goes on top first in this ball game. We talked about the standing room only crowd. Folks, take a look up here in the press box. Rick Brewer, the sports information director here in North Carolina, has had a devil of a time. You'll see people sitting in stools behind that front row. Those folks are normally not there. But Rick gave out 510 total passes, 218 working press. You could tell they're working. 116 photo, that's television, still, magazine, what have you. Three radio networks are here, and however many our people walked off with. So, that's a total of 510 at this ballgame, far and away. The largest number of press passes ever given out here at Keenan Stadium for a football game. They need a lot of food up there. This kick being taken at the six. This is Parquet. 
gets it back outside at the 20, and then he will be stopped. Excellent play by the special teams of Florida State. And let's check in with Carl Ravage. Carl? Hi, Ron. Let's quickly recap what transpired on Judgment Day. A miraculous play forced overtime for Nebraska and Missouri, and Scott Frost does the rest. Touchdown run for the quarterback. Nebraska survives 45-38. Earlier, Michigan routed Penn State 34-8. The debate as to who's number one can begin. Okay. Mike, to me, the interesting play in the ballgame was the tying touchdown by Nebraska. If I didn't know better, I should have thought the kid kicked the ball on purpose. That's a dead ball. That's no play. I think you'll find Michigan will probably hurdle Nebraska now yep. and all the way to number one. Yep, they sure will. Depending on this ball game. Oscar Davenport and company trading for the first time. Pressure on him, and he's going to be sacked. Back inside the 20-yard line. Pressure coming from Johnson and Julian Pittman. Also, Daryl Bush in on the stop. Well, we, we chronicled how North Carolina starts slow. All year, the first quarter has not been their quarter, but you cannot fall behind uh, this club. That's now, right. You, you, 15 touchdowns. First quarter for Florida State, North Carolina has had one. And that, when you figure they're 8-0, and oh, that seems impossible almost. They've only scored one touchdown first quarter all year long. But boy, Mike, your point is so well taken. They look a little nervous on offense. They're just not settled down. Play action. There's the quick look in pass. And that's the kind of thing we thought we would see early as the pass is thrown complete to May Brown. And they're going to have a third down and still about six, six and a half yards to pick up the first down. Mac Brown, the head coach, said that when someone asked him about his problems in the first quarter, he said, I think I'll take him out and scrimmage him for 90 minutes before we come to the stadium tonight. But uh, <laughs> they have not settled down on offense. Well, he also asked him, you know, if, does, does Keldorf, how soon does he play? And he said, I will sit down and port down a couple of times and calm him down before that happens. We have to have confidence in Davenport. Line to make the 32. Sets deep in the pocket, under pressure, gets the pass away, and it is very fortunate not to have been intercepted. And a flag comes from deep downfield. As Davenport was being hit, delivered the pass to Stevens anyway, and he's fortunate it wasn't picked off for a touchdown. He just lobbed it out there, but I think they're going to pick up an in, in, uh, interference call. Holding. Tay Cody, number 27. Mickey Andrews, the defensive coordinator. Uh, and he's going to follow that official up the field <laughs> with his headset in hand. Oscar Davenport really doesn't throw this ball well. Gets bumped by his tackle. And there's the completion of the play, L.C. Stevens. Here's Wadsworth going inside. But good job by the offensive line. Mike Gimble, number 76, picking up Andre Wadsworth. That's the initial first down of the night for North Carolina at the 2 minute 15 second mark of the opening quarter. And there you see the numbers. Minus five rushing, seven passing total for the Tar Heels. Florida State crowds the line of scrimmage again. They stay at home because here comes the running play. But Linton going to take it out for about five, maybe six yards. And Dyer, some kind of block for the fullback to clear the linebacker out of the way. Well, Deion Dyer is an excellent fullback. When you talk to the coaches, they just praise him. They say him, a Moose Johnson type just loves to block. Will knock you all around against Virginia. Put 13 different defensive players on the ground. Right, Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator, said he was 13 for 13 in that ball game, 100% on his blocks. Second down, about four and a half. And Carolina has not had much of this this evening. Lenton again, penetration, and going to be knocked down as Jerry Johnson got the penetration. And now it's going to be third down and long again. And Johnson just beat his man and was standing there waiting for the handoff. It looks like Florida State's looking at Jonathan Linton lined up real deep at eight yards and just getting a good charge out of the defensive line, getting penetration. So the Seminoles bring in the extra defensive back. It is third down. At this time, Carolina needs to take it to the 46-yard line. Under one minute to play, first quarter. They better do a good job on Andre Wadsworth here. He's one-on-one -on, -one on the offensive tackle. There he comes, Mike. Just what you're talking about. Disrupted the play, and he throws it high. 
Oh, you were right on with the call because Wadsworth beat his man and beat him badly. Didn't tackle the quarterback, but he made him throw quickly and high. Yeah, when you get in a situation on third down long, there's just no way you can help because you need to get four or five receivers out in the ball game. And 85, Andre Wadsworth is probably the best defensive lineman in the country, and you don't want to leave him singled up too much. That was Baxter who was trying desperately to get to him. First punt of the night here by Schmitz was good for 20 yards. Gets a good pass, pressure from the outside, and a better kick this time. A driving spiral, Warwick with a fair catch called for and made back at the 16-yard line. And let's check in again with Adrian Karsten. Adrian. Well, Ron, you told me how crowded it is up in the press box. Well, I may have the last standing room only seat left here in Keenan Stadium. They've never had this many people in here before. Behind me, we've always seen students on the grass area. But up above that, there's another 1,600 students standing, sitting, who have never been in here before. And on the other side, another 3,200 paying students. Our guess is somewhere close to 62,000. But how would you like to have been the guy who said, we're cutting it off here? No, you cannot come in. You would be 62,001. That was 62,002. Burt got in, and he's got a, an SRO uh, he got one of the, He got one of Lee Corso's passes. They played together. They fake the running play, and they throw to the man coming out of the backfield, and Simmons is there just to devour the play. Good concept, but McCray looked up and said, this 41 is not supposed to be here. Didn't it work this way in yeah. practice? Carl Torbush, who's the defensive coordinator, said he's the best I've ever coached, and that says a lot. 81 tackles going into this ball game tonight. Here's Carl writing down the play of Florida State and what defense they were in. So it's a gain of one on the play. It'll be second down and ten. And that is the end of the first quarter. So there's a timeout on the field with our score. Florida State seven and North Carolina nothing. We'll take a break. We'll be back in 90. Florida State scored the only touchdown, and they went to Melvin Pearsall. They're tied in, and that's how we stand as we head into the second 15 minute. Look at this. Two former Seminoles right there. Burt Reynolds, of course, on the left. And uh, we had the mics open at the time, and we heard him walk up to Lee and say, Hey, Chris, how are you? <laughs> no, actually, they were roommates in college. They know each other uh, very well. Lee stole him 100 from back in uh, college days. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably just the tip of the iceberg. Florida State taking over with one of their poorest field positions. They fake play action. Busby running for his life and gets it away to nobody. Just throws it away. A great coverage by North Carolina on that play. Robert Williams, 29. Dre Bly, 31. Ron, so far in the first quarter, they have held up. The problem has been the third receiver for Florida State coming on and getting the some of the safeties and some of the backup corners in progression. Which is exactly the point you made on our cut-in earlier today on game day, talking about you thought that would be the most important person in this game. I think you're going to try that. You're going to see more and more of that. You're going to see more and more of Pearsall. The numbers on Busby, 7 of 16, one pick, 64 yards and a touchdown. Coles is in the ball game again, number seven. Working against Reggie Love. Third down line to make to 27. He pumped. They try to go a stop and go. And there's the pressure. And they're going to call defensive holding. Deep downfield, there came a flag well after the play had been overthrown. Well, it's no secret, Ron. They're going after Reggie Love with the third receiver. Holding on the offense. Pass interference on the defense. Penalties offset. Replay third down. So offsetting penalties, as you could hear, offensive holding. We didn't see that flag. It was back among the bodies that were on the ground at the 12-yard line. Here's the adjustment right here. Now you got Bly and Williams right here, but now you all of a sudden you get a third receiver, Lavernius Coles, in the ball game going against Reggie Love. Little pump fake out there, and you see the good coverage by Bly and Williams. And not bad by Reggie Love, except he used his hands. Third down. And confusion on the part of Florida State, and they call a timeout. Do they have 12 in the field? Well, let's take a break. We'll look it over. 14.47 left until halftime. We'll be right back.
ESPN's presentation of college football, Florida State versus North Carolina, is brought to you by the 1997 Pontiac Bonneville. Luxury with attitude. Well, what you're looking at is Franklin Street in downtown Chapel Hill. No relation, uh, thank you. Nice place to hang out, just north side of the campus. It's been a very busy street the last three days. And part of the new structure here at uh, Chapel Hill, the athletic facility, seven to nothing, Florida State leads. They called the timeout a moment ago, and now they have it third down, and they need to take it to their own 27. Good protection, got his pass away, has it complete. You can see the defensive back fell down, and it is going to be a first down out of the 31-yard line. Travis Miner, the running back. The young running back is going to sit in here now to try to help with pass protection for Thad Busby. Get a little late blitz, steps out on the outside backer, K. Mays, Peter Warwick on completion. Boys, you could see Busby really took a shot after the pass was delivered, but he's okay. Two catches for Warwick for 29 yards. Comes the blitz again. Busby's pass thrown low. Did he catch it? Yes. Going to be good for a gain of one to the 32. And it was K. Mays who was coming on the blitz, number 53. Good pressure again by K. Mays. And a little bit of a problem that North Carolina's having right now. They'd like to get to Thad Busby with their down four. This is a zone blitz right here. They brought out uh, one of the defensive linemen, Russell Davis. So a little zone blitz there. So a little different defense on that play. Clock runs, 13 minutes, 45 seconds. Left to play in his opening half. Florida State, 7, North Carolina nothing. Blitz again. Pass right over the middle. As it complete, this is Lavernus Coles, and it'll be another first down for Florida State. And the, the Seminole offense really seems as though with every series a little more in sync, which is just the opposite of what North Carolina has seen. Keep working this area right here. Lavernus Coles, number seven, with the catch. The slant. Ball thrown right on time against Robert Williams. First down, Seminoles. The ball just across the 45-yard line. Busby, pressure up the middle. Got his pass away and caught it, but caught it out of bounds. Reggie Love with the cover on the play. Reggie's got to be winded, and we're not even midway of the second quarter. Well, they, they're making no mistake about it now. They, they have drawn a bullseye on number 24, and that, that, that's it right there. There's a bullseye on him. Thad Busby is working against Reggie Love because they're in a position where they've got the two best corners to the two-receiver side, so Reggie Love has to hold up, and they're sending two receivers at him. Lavernius Coles, then they'll replace him with Damian Harrell. Warwick and E.G. Green go to the left. And there's a look at Love working man on man against Terrell. Bottom of your screen. But here's the running play. Travis Miner turns it up. 50, 45, puts a hip down, and he gets slammed to the turf by Omar Brown. But that is enough for the Florida State first down. And it was Jason Whitaker, you could see 78, with a good block on the play. He made, Jason Whitaker made the block that opens this play up because now with the passing game working the linebackers have to respect the pass and all of a sudden they fake the throw get the draw to travis minor guards are downfield on your chopping k mays this is a good drive by florida state and you have to say this has been a very patient patient drive by the Seminoles. look at the first downs eight to one Play action, got the pass away. E.G. Green, the intended receiver, and holding on was Robert Williams. Good pressure again by Greg Ellis. ESPN College Football coming again this Thursday night weekend kickoff show at 7.30 Eastern. Then it's a visit to Conference USA. The Cincinnati Bearcats hook up with the East Carolina Pirates from down the road in Greenville, North Carolina. Thursday night right here on ESPN. Brown paces the sideline. 
his club offensively as you could see by those numbers just a moment ago they have only one first down meanwhile it has been the Seminoles maintaining ball control Busby pumps once goes on top got a man did he catch it inbounds nope stepped out of bounds to make the reception Peter Warwick waiting on the football and just a tad overthrown Peter Warwick and E.G. Green, two big, big play receivers working against Dre Bly. Just trying to work on a Canadian football field a little wider. <laughs> well, I tell you, though, he had lost the defensive back. Good heat on uh, Thad Busby again by Mike Pringley, number 91. They're knocking him down. That's what they want to do. Third big, down. Big third down run, as you say, right here. Line to make is the 33 of Carolina. Nine knockdowns. They haven't sacked him tonight, but nine times he's been knocked down. Flags are down. There was movement, and he got hit again. And now another flag. And the official's going to call him to, uh, as a late hit, but I don't know if you can hear that. Brian Simmons came in hard, and uh, he can't hear the whistle. He's going to almost pick that flag up. a good officiating group. Referees Terry McCauley. We've got a, a experienced group here tonight. I think they'll pick it up now. What do you think? Well, I definitely do because I, it was obvious that Simmons couldn't hear it. I don't nope. think that he would just you know, know that the whistle had blown and uh, and intentionally knock him down. And I think Florida State may have moved early on this they play. They did. They did. The left guard looked as though he came out of a stance. Final snap. Ball start on the offense. There's no foul. There's no foul for a personal foul. The player could not hear the whistle. As like I said, an excellent group. See, Bobby's proving the point. He's saying, what did he say? Bobby couldn't hear him either. No. Just like the kid. I don't think Simmons could hear the whistle. No, there's, there's movement on the play, and then Simmons, Brian Simmons, 41, just going to come in, and even if he did hear the whistle, it's not a bad idea. Just give him a little bump. Let him know you're here. He tried to grab a hold of him here to stop him from going through. So, five yards stepped off of the play. It is third down, and the line to make is the 33. Tonight, 50%. Third down conversions for the Seminoles. Ron, here's Harrell right here, and that matchup that they like. Let's see if they go back to him against Reggie Love. Blitz from the outside. Florida State picks it up, and that's where they go. But they got the one-on-one -on -one coverage, and it's knocked away by Love. Excellent play by Reggie Love. He's going to need oxygen at halftime, but a nice play on that throw to Damian Harrell. Damian Harrell alternating with Lavernius Coles, just trying to go downtown to beat Reggie Love. Able to deflect the ball. Big stop for North Carolina. Pressure on the punter. They get it away. Wobbly kick. Dre Bly has it rolled past him, and it goes into the end zone. It goes into the end zone for a touchback. 48 yards on the punt, and it came very close to hitting the official. Timeout on the field, 7-0 Florida State. Think about his future. The Equitable. College Football Scholarship Program. Tonight's Burger King students of the game are from Florida State defensive end Andre Wadsworth, a graduated senior with a degree in athletic administration. He's now enrolled in grad school. And from North Carolina, senior center Jeff Saturday with a 2-8 grade point average in the School of Business. Two excellent players right there, Ron. Saturday on offense and Wadsworth on defense. And in case you joined us late, I mentioned that Wadsworth named one of the four finalists to the Lombardi Award. Davenport under pressure, and that is a great job of the man we're just talking about. Wadsworth stayed right at home and just decked him. Did not buy the fake or anything else. Came into this, uh, this game tonight with 10 sacks. He's a former six foot one, 220 linebacker out of high school that was walked on at Florida State. And now he's walking on people. 
<laughs> they have not controlled him. They're trying to do different things to him, keeping the tight end, chop blocking, but they haven't been able to stop him tonight. Andre Wadsworth, he has been a difference maker. Here's the running play. Linton will take it across the 20. Lamont Green is there to put the stop on Jonathan. And we talked today about the, the type of offense that North Carolina has. They're, they're like the mice chewing at the cheese. They, they can't get big ball, big gulps of it. They, they're a methodical offense that has to take a lot of plays to get down the field. They don't get many big plays. So that's the reason, as we talked about off the top of the telecast, that it is imperative that number 27, Linton, carry the ball a lot tonight and have some effect with it. But right now, it's third down and 10. Davenport tripped up, and he will be sacked. Johnson fell on him, but it was Wadsworth who tripped him up and injured on the play Ryan Hoffman. The left tackle for North Carolina is hobbling off the field at the 23-yard line. You don't control Andre Wadsworth. He controls you. Just getting a hand on Oscar Davenport. He played inside last year. Now they moved him outside. Ryan Schmitz waits for the kick back at his five-and-a-half-yard line. Seminoles lead it 7 0. They have a nine-man rush at the line of scrimmage. Gets his kick away. Not a long kick. He misses Warwick at the 43. Return to the open side of the field. Looks to turn the corner, and that is a nice open field tackle. Simmons, I believe, was clipped on the play yeah. and still made the tackle. They're going to pick up uh, some, a penalty here, which will move him past the 50. Boy, good play by Simmons. 38 yards and a kick and 11 on the return. I think it's Derek Gibson, number six, that's going to be blocking on Simmons. Yep. There's the push in the back. back. Mm -hmm. Adrian Carson, let's check in with you. Brian, before they lost the offensive series, uh, Cleve Bryant, the quarterback's coach, standing right next to Mac Brown, Keldorf, and Oscar, and said, look, Oscar, if we don't get a spark from you, we're going to have to make a change. Now, to his defense, as he came off the field, Cleve said, I do know that we had a breakdown in coverage there, so we may or may not see a change in quarterback their next offensive series, but uh, he did mention them, too, uh, before the last series run. Keldorf, of course, outstanding. Last year, he broke the foot. That's what Oscar Davenport had an opportunity to come in and show what he could do. But Keldorf was just untouchable last year year and he struggled this season. I don't think they'll pull the plug on Oscar Davenport until after the second quarter until they go to the locker room and see talk it over a little bit. Busby pressure on him and the pass incomplete and let's check in. Oh no here comes a late flag. Hold up Carl Ravitch. We'll get it right back to you. That flag thrown very late. Good, good call around it's it's uh they were all of Brian Simmons is all over the back of the receiver. Melvin Pearsall. So it is going to be interference, and now let's check in with Carl Ravage. Carl? Hi, Ron. Good call on the delay. Here we go. Miami, Virginia Tech, the Hokies with a chance to run to an Alliance Bowl, and they're running here. Lamont Pigues, 24-13. The Syracuse narrowly, narrowly getting by BC. Big show for Virginia Tech. Well, that is big as far as the Big East is concerned. That was coming too We've got now. Virginia Tech the day after Thanksgiving oh, no, in Charlottesville, which could be <laughs> a really interesting affair. And Virginia's a fast, improving football team. Yeah, they are. First down following the penalty. Busby going to go on top. Throws it long, and it is caught. Oh, lost the football. You could see the coverage that time by Robert Williams. You hear a lot about Dre Bly, but let me tell you, Robert Williams is just as good a corner as Dre Bly. Maybe a better cover corner. He's working on Peter Warwick here. Peter Warwick with an out and up, but look at the position Robert Williams is in. Knocks the ball away and again forces him outside. Robert Williams, good, good shape, sinking. And, and I think what you say, some of the coaches do feel that. And taking nothing away from Dre Bly, Dre Bly is the big play guy. 11 interceptions last year, but Williams seems to be the steadier of the two. He's, ste he's like a blanket. He's a blanket on these receivers tonight. Busby has missed his last five passes. Second and ten. Here's the running play. Minor looks for a block. Great job defensively. He'll be strung out and dropped for a one-yard loss. It's Greg Ellis and Ebenezer Ekuban on the stop. 
Well, Aki Bonds, I they think, is going to be a great one. He was a tight end, wasn't he? His second, uh, second team tight end last year, and uh, Carl Torbush said if he stays healthy, he can be as good as anybody we've had. And they compare him to Bulware. They compare him to Wadsworth and Renard Wilson that played last year. So that's pretty high company. Kevin Long, the senior out of Somerville, South Carolina, comes out over the football. It is third down, and for Florida State to keep the drive going, they have to take it to the Carolina 44. Seminoles lead it, seven to nothing. Deep in the pocket, deep over the middle, pass just a little too tall. Lavernus Colds went up for it, and I'm not so sure it didn't go through his hands. No, it's the same thing again. The third receiver, you keep talking about it, but it, Reggie Love, if North Carolina's going to win this football game, Reggie Love's going to have to play a big part tonight. Lavernus Coles again, running away from Love, went right through his hands, poorly thrown off. Good series by North Carolina's defense. Just keep them in the ball game so their offense can get going. High pass, Cottrell gets it away, and it's a line drive. This is blind. Spins around, looks for a block, and there will be none. He will be tackled at the 21-yard line. <laughs> Some great athletes on both sides of the field. And now here comes a late flag in, and there was a push, and I couldn't tell who, if it was that first guy in. Here's another flag that's been thrown. Dre Bly pushed someone after he was down, and then there was another push. Unsportsmanlike against North Carolina. It's tough enough to move against that defense anyway. Without digging yourself yeah. a hole, you're exactly right. So now let's take a timeout. 8.25 left until halftime. Florida State 7 and North Carolina nothing. Get a home equity loan at FMB and we'll send you on a trip. That's right. Close on your home equity loan and take your choice of six great deluxe vacations. Four days and three nights in historic Williamsburg, exciting New Orleans, charming Charleston, the Orlando attractions, Nashville, or Hilton Head Island. Choose where you want to go and what you want to do. You can even take the kids along. So get a home equity loan now at an FMB near you and get out of town. An equal housing lender. I'm Steve Robinson. Join the new sensation this year surrounding Florida State basketball. Season tickets and new minute packs are now available. Call 1-888-FSU-NO and reserve your seat today. Well, Charlie says you're maybe the 50th best heavyweight. In the world? In Georgia. But when there are differences, we keep it in the family. Oh, yeah, and Steve Levy sits over here. He's the one who called you puke -a Hey, Jeff, don't forget your stick. And keeping it in the family has made our family stronger. Charlie, come on out and get your whooping. Charlie, come on out. Stand it. Seven to nothing, our score, Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Adrian Karsten come in to you from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. The showdown of the ACC, number five against number two. And so far in the first half, it has been all number two as the Seminoles have dominated, although they only lead seven to nothing. Dyer in motion. They give the ball to Linton, the tailback, and Sam Coward steps up into the hole, and there is nothing. And again, Mike on first down, Carolina for the night has zero yards on first down. And, Ron, let me, let me just show you something here. When you get to the position, as deep as the tailback is, can't help but he's eight yards deep, and any time it looks like Florida State sees him at eight yards deep, they really get penetration by the linebackers. That's Sam Coward, number one. So maybe a play-action pass off of that would, would open things up a little bit. And now a timeout has been called with 7 minutes 53 seconds left until halftime. We'll take it with them. It's all Seminoles so far. The Tar Heels have called timeout.
takes a little longer to pour a beer as good as Sam Adams. <laughs> Sam Adams. A better glass of beer. Reaching your financial goal. Seven to nothing, Florida State leads. We're just talking, Mike. This this play coming up right here is really huge in this ballgame. If you look at total yards, three for Carolina, 107 for Florida State. And they'll only be behind 7 nothing. Here's where I think they've got involved to tight end a little bit. Algie Crumper, 82, because they've got a good match against Darrell Bush. But those linebackers set a lot deeper this time. Davenport in the pocket. Going to try to run, and he will be knocked down after a gain of a couple. Andre Wadsworth got to him. And let's check in once again with Carl Ravage. Carl? Hi, Ron. Interesting stuff in the Pac-10 with Washington losing to Oregon, number 16. Arizona and Cal, and watch the ball go down. Derek Gardner comes up with it. 71 yards later, he's at Pager. Arizona State's only up 10 on Cal, Ron. So the Sun Devils, uh, after the big win last week, still up in the ball game. They've got it by 10. Our situation, 7-0. Florida State, third down and eight. And Carolina, delay a ball game. Five yards going to have to be stepped off. And... Boy, Mike, offensively, this has been a nightmare. Well, that's not a good sign. Your quarterback, they were nonchalant coming up to the line of scrimmage. And I think, as I said before, I think when they get to the halftime, then they'll start talking about Chris Keldorf a little bit, the backup quarterback, because Oscar doesn't seem at this point to be totally in the ballgame. Keldorf. Waiting patiently on the sideline, and the way things are going, I'd be surprised if we don't see him in that third quarter, if not sooner. They try the option, pitch back, ball, they are lucky, did not come loose. Florida State says they got it, but it was Lamont Green. Lamont Green who made the tackle. The ball will be placed inside the one. You just look at the offensive players, and, and they just are, are stymied at what's going on out there. And you can't blame all, all on Oscar. But that was a down-the-line option play. They're lucky didn't blow up in their face. Well, Mike, the guard and Saturday both had been pushed back into him. He should have held on to the football. That this, ball could have been a free touchdown. This has been a total mismatch. Florida State's defense against North Carolina's offense. They're very fortunate. Their defense has hung in there. Smith standing at the base of the end zone, and you know the rule. He cannot take a step back. Gets his kick away. Line drive, very returnable. This is Ward from the 40. 30, and down to the 28-yard line. ESPN NFL Countdown comes your way every Sunday at 11.30 Eastern. Join the distinguished faculty of Bristol University tomorrow morning for the best pregame show in the business. Then at 7 o'clock, the ultimate highlight show, NFL Primetime. It's followed by Sunday Night NFL. Take the bus to Pittsburgh as Jerome Bettis and the Steelers host the Baltimore Ravens. So the Seminoles take it over with great field position. 40 yards in the kick at 13 on the return. And here they come with a running play with Miner. And Miner inside the 20, down to the 15, and now the 14-yard line. Brian Simmons comes over to make the tackle, and that is a gain of 14 yards, and hang on if you're a Carolina fan. Omar Brown, number two, the safety, came up, had a nice shot at Travis Miner, and he, Travis Miner shows you how strong he is at 6'1", 190, because he ran right through the tackle of Omar Brown. Eight carries for 30 yards for Miner. That may not seem like something to write home about, but in this football game, where running has been basically non-existent, that's huge. Run Florida State down here in the past likes a quick post pattern. They go with the running play again, and this will gain maybe a half yard, and that's it as Russell Davis steps up to make the tackle. And the way they're spreading out North Carolina right now, you're either going to get you're going to get the post 
out of some one of these receivers. And they keep trying to wear down the defensive backs. Bly okay. and Williams have really held up well against E.G. Green and Peter Warwick. We haven't heard their names that much tonight. No big plays. I got a feeling they're going to work on Reggie again here with his quick post. Two wide receivers go left. That's the top of the screen. Lavernus Coles, you can see him lined up. He's at the bottom of the screen. And the shotgun, they put the ball up on top, going to the corner. Touchdown, Florida State. Touchdown, E.G. Green. And they caught it against E.G. Williams. Boy, not a good sign if you're a North Carolina fan. Thad Busby threw the ball perfectly to E.G. Green. You know how you get the fade on the outside, the outside receiver? They ran the fade with the inside receiver against Robert Williams. But you can't keep putting the defense in those positions. It's the offense's fault that they have given great field position to Florida State. Extra point attempt is up, and it is good. So with four minutes and 25 seconds left until halftime, our new score, the Seminoles of Florida State, the number two team in the nation, 14, and North Carolina nothing. To be a professor is to bring ideas to life. To enrich young minds and gently guide. It is pondering ancient verities and finding new truths. It is making the world a better place by sharing what we know. That's what it is to be a professor at Florida State University. The dream begins here. Florida State forges on top. Thad Busby's going to hit E.G. Green on the fade route. And you see the separation starting right here. It's a great catch by E.G. Green. Fades to the outside, one-hands it back into his body. Pretty good coverage by Williams. Just kind of stopped on it a little bit. Boy, he grabbed that thing in with one hand, didn't he? He really did. Thad Busby with a big pass completion. Now, Busby's an interesting story. He gets no respect whatsoever, and he's only lost one game as a starter. And right now, as you look at Davenport and also Chris Keldorf from the sideline, one of these guys got to step up big time, and it better happen quickly. This kick is going to bound into the end zone, and North Carolina will take it over at the 20 as Parquet was the closest man to it, but he elected not to run it out. Is, this is a series that Oscar Davenport has to get something going, Ron, or you'll face uh, maybe the hook at the halftime. We expected not a lot of big plays in this game because of the defenses, but plays over 10 yards in the ball game. Florida State has eight. North Carolina has zero. No, and then one of the receivers of the tight end, Algie Crumpler, somebody has to step up here because Linton's the type of back you need when you're in the ball game, not fighting from behind. He's a big back. He's a four or five yard at a time type back. They need a receiver to come up big here. Davenport from the shotgun. There's the quick looking pass. Got it complete. That may be the longest gainer of the night, and it is. It's good for 10 yards to Nay Brown. And no huddle by North Carolina with 4-12 on the clock. Trying to find something that will settle Oscar Davenport down. So now no huddle, open it up, spread him out. Second first out of the night. That's the first one by the offense. The other one was by penalty. Davenport drills it. Ball is tipped and that should have been caught. Dropped by Elsie Stevens. And particularly in a ball game like this. Those kind of drops are killer. Yeah, you, you've got to make everything count against Florida State. L.C. Stevens trying to get off the ball. And again, good corner play by Tay Cody. Using his hands to try to keep L.C. Stevens off his route. L.C. looked up and the ball was there. But with the kind of pressure his quarterback's been getting, he got to turn around and be ready. I think you go right back to L.C. Stevens. This time they roll the pocket. Davenport going to try to run. Spins and maybe has one yard, and that's it. 
And let's check in with Adrian Karsten. Adrian? Ron, remember right after the kickoff, I mentioned that Daryl Bush and a few other defensive leaders are having trouble fighting the flu. Well, they've been taking a lot of liquids over here and feeling like they've been on, uh, running on half a tank, but they got to thank their offense because they haven't had to play much so far, so they really don't feel as winded as they would have otherwise. And Adrian, that's a great point. And they haven't played under pressure because North Carolina hasn't challenged them on their side of the ball, on the side of the field. Dexter Jackson, you could see him fly it up with the safety blitz and the whistles, and the flag came down. With the exception of that first series where North Carolina got the ball deep and turned it right over, they have had no penetration. In fact, they haven't come close to going no. across midfield since then. In your defense, when that happens, you don't get pressed. Right on the snap. Ball start on the offense. Five yards, third down. Mac Brown didn't expect this out of his offense. Felt like they would they could move the ball. If they could establish the run with Linton, which they haven't done. So everything now is thrown. Now you play Florida State's kind of game. You're a one-dimensional team now throwing the football. It has all happened at the point of attack, and Florida State has beaten the offensive line at the point of attack. 0 for 6 on third down conversions this evening. Davenport's pass. Well overthrown. And that will stop the clock. And now Florida State gets the football back. They have two timeouts left and just under three minutes to play. Well, and you can bet. And Oscar Davenport's thinking right now. He knows he's not far away from Chris Keldorf coming in the ball game. So you press a little bit to add to the situation. So Mac Brown will do a good job trying to settle him down at half. Six punt for North Carolina in the first half. And... The last three have been line drive kicks. Nine man rush for the Seminoles again. Pressure at the middle and it's blocked. Brian Allen is the man who got through to get it. He got the block and now. The floodgates can open with two minutes and 46 seconds left in the first half of play as Florida State has it inside the 15-yard line. And again, Ron, it goes back to when your offense doesn't perform and you, you put your defense in a bad situation, you're kicking teams. Just a block punt. That was not blocked at all by North Carolina. What you mean is nobody stopped no, anybody. No, no, <laughs> It was like the floodgates. Like you talked about floodgates opening here for their offense. It was opening for the punt team. Blocked three punts in the field goal the last two games against the North Carolina special teams. Busby ends the running play. Minor hit from behind. And that's Mays who will come across to make the tackle on him. Kay Mays trying to guard against what could be devastating here. Last year's game, Florida State blocked three of Carolina's kicks. Two blocked punts, gave the Seminoles great field position, and then they blocked a field goal attempt, stifled one of the few scoring chances for the Tar Heels all day, and that final was 13 to nothing. So they're right back where they started from last year. Ron, this defense in North Carolina has got to stand up right now, or their lights are going to be out here. They need a stop here. They need to hold in their field goal. Around. Bonnie Holiday came up and made the tackle, and Stringer just disappeared. Let's check in with uh, Carl Ravage. Carl? Hi, Ron. Coming up at the half, Judgment Day, of course, is going to lead to Decision Day. Who is going to be number one? Nebraska, what a fantastic finish. If you haven't seen the play, you have to come back and watch at the half. How about Michigan? Big statement today at Happy Valley. We will find out all that coming up at the half. Ron, back to you. Okay, Carl. That was Lavernus Colds on the reverse, who cut it back into the middle. And Lavernus cut it back into the big people. <laughs> Third down, line to make. They need to take it to the four. Florida State leads 14 to nothing. They're trying to blow this one open. Running play. Minor to the right. Gets one block. Waits for the block, and he will score. That was Donald Haven, and there is going to be a holding call against the Seminole. It's number 68, Jason Whitaker. When he did tackle the North Carolina player, and it's away from the call, Ron. And 
on the offense. Ten yards, spot on the foul. Coach Bowden was all the way out on the field in protest. Well, it, it's a definite hold, but it was way back away from where the play is going to go. You're going to see it right here. 68, Jason Whitaker tackling Bonnie Holiday. Big, big play. See it again right here is the hold and a good call by the referee. So the penalty pushes it back to the 25-yard line. Third down, the line to make is the four and a half. Shotgun formation for Busby. Nobody in the backfield, quarterback draw. Has five, has ten, and he goes down as Ellis got there from behind along with Brian Simmons, and they just put themselves in good field goal position, a lot closer for Sebastian Janikowski. What good call by Mark Rick and Bobby Bowden to spread everybody out. You see the motion to get Kay Mays out, number 53, and there's nobody in there when the backer leaves on the draw. 32-yard field goal attempt. Left footer is ready. Gets a good pass. His kick is good. So with 32 seconds showing on the stadium clock, it is Florida State 17 and a silenced North Carolina crowd and team at nothing. Mike, in a situation like this, you don't have time for emotional things in the locker room at halftime you got to repair a lot of things that are broke and they're broke on offense well, I think the first thing they have to do is decide whether they're going to bring Chris Keldorf back out that's going to be a conversation with Greg Davis the offensive coordinator Mac Brown he told you the other day he's going to look in the eyes of Oscar Davenport now you can't blame it all on Oscar Davenport they haven't got blocking up front they never established the run Florida State is just whipping them on defense but I think you're going to see Chris Keldorf when we come out in the third quarter just something to give him a spark. Well, Keldorf is the type of guy that, as we watched him in practice the other day, that the that the other kids really identify with his leadership abilities. And he has handled the situation of Davenport taking over the number one spot extremely well. In fact, he and Oscar have become closer over the situation, which is speaks volumes for Keldorf. But right now, they need to get close together on the sideline and talk about what they can give each other mentally to help them out of a big hole. Yeah, I think they got to come back on the second half and run the ball. They've got to start that. They've got to try to find a tight end, Algie Crumpler, a little bit. But I think we're going to see Keldorf in this, in, as we come out in the third quarter, unless Oscar sells them on the fact that, uh, you know, they can move this ball early in the third quarter. But they have shown no signs of life on offense. Barely a pulse. Janikowski to kick it off. Gets another good foot into this one. Yanked it to the sideline and it fumbled out of bounds at the two. Well, Parquet fumbled the ball, knocked it out of bounds. And I think the thing to do right now is just go on one knee and then sprint to the locker room. Yeah, get out of here. But you know what? You're starting Thomas to see Reagan, the signs of not believing five. right now that you can Thomas win. Reagan, Lack of concentration right now. Uh, an offense that's uh, discombobbled right now. And it's just that's the job Mac Brown, the coach, is going to have to do at halftime is remember, we have a shot to win this football game. We're better than this. We're just not playing that way. Turn the drive at the two-yard line. And Florida State still has two timeouts to make it interesting. Now they're not, we'll get the interesting now. They used one. They just used one. And, and check what I said. Go on one knee. They're so deep. You can't even go on one knee without picking up a safety. Got to get a little movement now. Just quarterback sneak a couple of times and get out of here, like you said. We want to take this opportunity. Well, next Saturday on ESPN 2, 12.30 Eastern Time, Tammy Banks and Tim Dwight. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, uh, Chris Lee and uh, Kirk coming up behind the tree. That's over in the corner of the end zone. And they will give their thoughts about this first half, but I think everybody's thoughts are pretty much on the same page, and that is Florida State's defense and Carolina's offense. One has been superb, and the other has been uh, just non-existent. Seconds left in his 
opening half. And as Mike mentioned, Florida State still has one timeout left. That's what they'll do to go straight over the top with think, the quarterback yeah, stand. And I think Florida State will just let the clock move because they know they can't stop it long enough to, to get it back anyway. Yeah, so they, the they're just content to get out of here two at half. Florida State's defense have, has risen to the occasion. 13 seconds, 12, and that man right there, Mickey Andrews, the architect of that Florida State defense. And you're not going to see him smile right now, maybe even at the end of the ball game, but uh, he's smiling inside because his lads have performed extremely well. It is halftime here at Chapel Hill. As they head to the locker room, our score, the Seminoles, 17, and North Carolina nothing. Now with the Buick Century Halftime Report, let's join Carl Ravitch. Judgment Day, Ron. Nebraska's helmet survives, but the other white one there, Penn State, gets knocked for a big-time loop. Welcome, everybody, and coming up on the Century by Buick Halftime Report, much to do on Judgment Day. The judges so far this season have been unkind to Penn State. That should continue when the latest poll comes out. Nebraska, what a fantastic finish they had. You have to see it to believe it. Talk about immaculate receptions. There was another one in this game. Michigan storms into Happy Valley and storms out on Unbeaten, they right now have the inside track to the Rose Bowl. Uh. Florida State up on North Carolina, 17 to nothing. Top 25 update: the Pac-10 is the speed. That's a freshman, James Jackson, 77 yards, 78 yards, 24. At that point, but Virginia Tech now 27 to 19 as they appear to be holding on in Blacksburg in the fourth with about Happy Valley. Nobody really thought Columbia, Missouri was a spot for a potential upset, except perhaps the Missouri Tigers, who have won three in a row, put big points on the board, and they bring a pass happy attack. Remember, you got to go back to the Central Florida game last time that perhaps a Nebraska team faced the team this effective through the air. Corby Jones finds Eddie Brooks. 38-31 Missouri late in the fourth. Final seconds of regulation. Scott Frost. Matt Davison takes it off the turf. Watch it again. The pass would originally be designed for Shevin Wiggins, number five. Wiggins drops the ball, and then it deflects off his feet. If he intentionally kicked it, it's a flag on Nebraska. 38-38 at the end of regulation, and then Scott Frost. Fourth touchdown of the day rushing. Cornhuskers up 45-38. Missouri trying to convert on their own fourth and seven in overtime. Corby Jones, who is absolutely outstanding, this time cannot avoid the sack. Nebraska a winner, 45-38. Though they knew coming in they needed to put up big numbers, this did not accomplish that goal, but it does accomplish the real goal, which is to stay unbeaten. They are now 9-0. and And of course, Scott Frost, the hero of the game, a game that went not very much the way Nebraska had anticipated. A big step back in the polls. Here come the Nittany Lions at home against fellow unbeaten Michigan. First quarter, 3-0 Michigan in. The story of the day, the maize and blue are in the face of the big blue. Glenn Steele takes down Mike McQuarrie. First quarter, same score, Anthony Thomas. 10-0 Michigan. They came in. They were upset by some of the things Mike McQuarrie had said, which were we were going to just go at the side of Charles Woodson. Oh, here they go at the side of Dadrian Taylor, and he lays out Bob Stevenson. Brian Greasy, composed, poised, never appeared rushed. With his foot slipping, he still regains and finds Charles Woodson. Michigan up 17 zip. They roll. Final score, 34-8. They hold Penn State to 169 yards of total offense, 38 in the first half. And that Michigan offense, I mean, we talk about that Michigan D, but the Michigan offense, 460. Here's how the coaches poll look coming into the day. Nebraska had a very solid lead, 77 points ahead of Florida State and 153 points ahead of Michigan. The Wolverines had only two first place votes. Now obviously the first place votes that Penn State was getting will be up for grabs, but that's a big margin guys. 153 points would be a lot for Michigan to make up most, if not 
the vast majority of those coaches voting Nebraska number one have to change to Michigan. Yeah, first of all, you look at this game tonight, you're seeing on ESPN, Florida State looks very, very good on defense, just flat out dominating North Carolina. The game this afternoon, the Michigan Wolverines, very big win for Lloyd Carr. A lot of people questioning his program earlier this year. He has come out, his team has come out firing. To me, after this weekend, the Michigan Wolverines are the number one team in the country. They are back to playing Michigan football. They look great. Well, Kirk, first of all, God must have been watching on Judgment Day in heaven, <laughs> and he must be a Nebraska fan because that's the only way that play could have happened for Nebraska to win the football game. But I think with that play, they will stay number one because they're so far ahead. But I'll tell you what, the other guys are starting to catch them a little bit by little bit. Well, the margin wasn't quite as big for the Huskers in the Associated Press poll. That might be the one where Michigan or perhaps Florida State could make the jump. Now to the guys who witnessed Michigan's dominance firsthand today. Mike Adamley and Touched a little bit early by number 23, Dwayne Starks. Wayne comes up with the ball. Big play. And let's but see the official if they it. It. He did. did. Oh, 50,000 folks here in Blacksburg are breathing a collective sigh of relief. Butch could see the replay we're about to show you. Well, Butch is upset because of the fact. Now, take a look at Starks right here. Now, watch the ball. Does it alter its course? Watch the left hand. It certainly does. It did alter its course. It was a good call by the official. I think the beef that Butch Davis had.